Bishop, Mr. Jeremy Tobias. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jeremy Tobias, CEO of Community Action Partnership at Kern. I'm proud to be here today to celebrate the M Street Navigation Center's first full year of operation. It's been an honor for all of us at CAPK to work alongside the network of caring people and organizations, providing life-changing services for those facing homelessness. You all have my deepest gratitude. I want to share with you some of our impactful statistics that we have here at the M Street. Mind you, these numbers are for a pandemic year, operating at less than full capacity, and undertaking restricted operational protocols that have significantly changed the way we deliver our services. But nonetheless, these are some interesting statistics to, to uh, hear. So, so far this first year, we've served 26,905 meals here at the M Street Navigation Center. We've provided 22,949 meals to be distributed out in the community with partnership of Flood Ministries. We have 55 residents that have been placed into permanent housing or achieved family reunification through our programs. That's, that's a big one. We've so far had 10 residents graduate from BC's Project Higher Up job training program. We currently have two residents participating in culinary courses through CityServe. We have five residents currently participating in relapse classes through CityServe. And we just started receiving pets in March, and so far we have cared for 11 pets here at the, at the M Street Navigation Center. And you know, one of the things I also want to point out is so far in this first year, we've had 119 individuals volunteer to provide services here at the M Street Navigation Center. And those of you that have been around the center have seen it grow and change over this past year. Uh, once the base building was up, we've added some things. We've, you've noticed, you can probably notice around the facility, we've added irrigation and landscaping, planter, planter boxes, you see them right here. There's a mural. See that beautiful mural on the back wall over there? Uh, they put together the M Street Cafe and shade structures and, and things like that. So the, the center is not stagnant. It keeps growing and moving with the needs of the, of the residents in the community. But the biggest changes we have all made together are to people's lives. We are proud to, to have standing with us today individuals who have faced challenges that most members of our society couldn't even imagine going through. They have overcome their, these challenges because they have had the strength to build a new life for themselves, worked hard to achieve their goals, and truly because they have had the, received the support to do that. In just a few minutes, you will meet Mario, Viviana, and Johnny to hear their powerful stories. I want to thank them, and I want to congratulate all the residents at the M Street Navigation Center who are pursuing their new futures today. The reason we're all standing here recognizing the M Street Navigation Center for one year celebration is because the County of Kern heard the community's call for action. A call for action on homelessness and helping those in need. And they found a way to make this facility a reality. We should all remember the county fast tracked this project and moved it from concept to reality at an absolutely unbelievable pace. Now it is my pleasure to welcome Kern County Supervisor and CAPK board member Mr. Mike Maggard. Won't you be glad when we're done wiping and wearing masks and doing all that stuff? I will be. Uh, it's really good to be with you guys. I'm excited about that a year has passed and that uh, we've made the progress that we have. I wanted to uh, take a moment just to tell you a bit of the backstory about how this happened. Um, nothing happens without a team of people. So it's a big team of people that, that made this all occur. There's a team of people inside the county, and there's a team of people inside of CAFK. 
and I'm grateful to both both of those teams. There are other people that you'll never know their names. There are people that live out there just a few blocks away from here who were very, very worried what this, uh, what this site facility would have on their neighborhoods, on their businesses, on their lives. I'm thankful to them as well because I don't hear a single complaint about the implications, the consequences of this facility on the surrounding neighborhood. And I believe me, I would hear if, if that's the case. I hear lots of things from lots of people. Uh, so I, there's lots of people to thank, but I wanted to start by thanking um, Ryan also. Uh, I, I came to Ryan, others came to Ryan. I remember driving mo most of the area of uh, uh, the unincorporated area of uh, Kern County that I represent that has the biggest impact of homelessness is Oildale. I also represent the Westchester neighborhoods that are behind us here, although they're in the city of Bakersfield. But in, in Oildale, I was driving around and I noticed, I noticed on a very, very hot day, a fellow laying on the ground completely out of it. He was unconscious. It was 110 degrees outside, and that pavement must have been 125 or hotter. And his head was laying on that pavement, cooking his brain. I, I know that man would not live if we didn't find an alternative to him. Well, I'm not the only one to share those stories with Ryan, but Ryan fully embraced that. He saw that for himself. He's a local guy. Ryan joined us in, a, in our effort to try to do something about this, and he helped us make it happen. Other people helped him as well. Amanda Ruiz. Uh, Ryan's in the back. Okay, where's Amanda? There's Amanda. Hi, Amanda. She, Amanda Ruiz helped make this happen as well. She is an extraordinary public servant, and I want to thank both of you for your commitment to do that, and, and many other people do that as well. But you guys are at the center of it, and I want to thank you. I also want to thank some people at Cap K. Uh, Jeremy Tobias is a godsend to us. Uh, we throw anything and everything at Jeremy, and he just keeps... Smi at least in front of us, he smiles. I don't know what he does in the middle, but in front of us, he smiles, and uh, and he, he just gets it done. Uh, and Lori, where, where's there's Lori? And is Sheila here? Sheila, Sheila, Sheila back. You, you guys and uh, many many others help uh, help this get done. So I want to thank you for that and for the difference that you're making in people's lives. One, one more thing, and then I'll give my little presentation to you. A, a certificate in recognition of uh, presented a committee action partnership with Kern in recognition of the one year anniversary and operating the M Street Navigation Center and meaningful accomplishments. Boy, these words pale in, the, in the comparison to what really happens. Meaningful accomplishment, boy, yes. Uh, addressing homelessness and for exemplary public service and civic contributions to the community and Kern County. This is dated today and signed by all, all the members of the Board of Supervisors. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your unfailing, unwavering commitment to our in our community. Um, I've been involved in homelessness since in Kern County since 2007. For a couple years I went away to Orange County and oversaw the programs in Orange County addressing homelessness. When I came back to accept the position as the director of flood, I met with Supervisor Maggard. I don't know if you remember that, Mr. Supervisor, but I met and he said, what can we do? And I said, we need, we need more shelters. We need more places for people to go. We cannot address the issue of homelessness unless there are some other place for somebody to live other than on the street. And so that started the whole ball in motion. And I'm so excited. It makes, it makes my heart do so good when we have our meetings with um, Lori and Rebecca and Traco 
and the staff, when we talk about, we see the people that have come into the Hill Street Navigation Center, and we see the names of those people who have gone out and who've been housed, and those people who are off the street and the issues are being served by cities, uh, by uh, city served, and they're being served by the other agencies that are homeless collaborative. And uh, we should be proud. We should be proud of this. I remember walking through the property with uh, with Ryan Alsop and Amanda and others. And, and I want to give Ryan uh, credit for the vision that he had to turn this into um, this property into a navigation center. So our community is moving forward. We're addressing the issues of homelessness and we're helping people that need help. You know, they're not just homeless people because they're people who are just happen to be experiencing homelessness. And that's why I like to refer to them as people experiencing homelessness because homelessness is not who they are. They're a human being made in God's image. But their current circumstances, they're homeless. So our community is stepping up to the plate and it has stepped up to the plate and it's continuing to step up to the plate to address these issues. And so I'm very proud of our partnership with CAPK, with Jeremy. I used to serve on the CAPK board and I know it's a great organization and uh, just wonderful people. And again, we're making a difference. And that's the takeaway from this first year of the M Street Navigation Center. Flood is a great partner with, with uh, M Street staff. We're the main referring agency. We make sure those people who want to get shelter get placed into the industry navigation center so happy thrilled excited about what's going on and very again very very proud of our efforts and so congratulations everybody for that forgetting my true value. My confidence was really low. It all piled up on me. The anxiety, the depression, all of it, like a rubber band. You know, one day I just pushed it all a little too far back and I snapped. I truly did not realize how much this was all affecting me. The day I had a mental crisis, I knew I needed help. I couldn't go back to the things that were hurting me. But I really had no other place to go, and I ended up at Mary Kay Shell, and I was a mess. Um, they gave me a jump start, and they were able to connect me with Frizy Hope House, which eventually led me to the Navigation Center, which was able to supply me with the resources that I needed to transition to a better life. I'm thankful that through the Navigation Center, I was able to take care of my mental and physical health. And if you haven't already, to everyone here at M Street, I would definitely recommend making an appointment um, they're all wonderful and they're able to help out with housing as well. If there's one thing that I could leave you with, it would be to branch out 
don't get comfortable. Um, keep pushing forward and don't lose your faith. Take advantage of all of the wonderful resources available because you'd be surprised at how investing an hour or two of your time can truly make a difference in your life. This one day I went to a realized prevention class thinking that, you know, it could help with my codependency at CityServe and now lo and behold, I'm currently in a welding serve through BC and not to toot my own horn or anything but I'm gonna toot my horn <laughs> guys I'm good <laughs> watch out Thank you so much, Lori. It is an honor to be here today. I was on that same tour with Jim when this was all dirt. And I just want to say we have some amazing leaders in our community. Our county CAO, Ryan Alsop, Amanda Wright at his side, Jeremy with CAPK, Jim with Flood, coming together and just bringing leadership um, to these kinds of things that are so needed in our community. To me, the M Street Navigation Center is one of the greatest blessings that has been in our community ever. To be able to allow people to come in uh, with those lower barriers and be able to bring their pets, the things that, that mean something to them, and then help them navigate, which is the beautiful word, through some of the muck that their life has came to. And then you can see this morning how the change is coming as we connect as service providers from all of the places that have been mentioned come around and bring that help. Uh, it's been a tremendous blessing for us to partner with Bakersfield College to be able to come with a van and pick up right here at M Street and bring students over, whether it's a relapse prevention class or whether it might be, you know, uh, basic office skills. We're doing culinary right now. In the fall, we're adding a Cal OSHA safety certificate. I mean, the things to be able to get people with job skills back on track with their life. What I love is the culinary class, and Mario's in the culinary class, and he's graduated a wonderful student of ours. But it's, an eight, it's a nine-hour course with Bakersfield College to get your California food handler's license. But we built eight weeks around nine hours because we want to build relationship with these students. We want to be able to come alongside them and champion and know them. And it's just a blessing on our end to be a part of that. And so this morning, I want you to know that we celebrate. Uh, Viviana did finish her first uh, welding course. I'm sitting behind her. Joey, stand up. Joey also came out of M Street. <laughs> yeah. Joey also came out. And Joey and Viviana both finished that. They're both enrolled for the second welding class that starts on June the 14th. And I believe both of them will be welders. And you can imagine that they're going from the homeless situation as people who are experiencing uh, being unsheltered, as Jim said, to moving into a place where they can begin their own life. And they actually have job skills. And when they get housing, they'll be able to make that happen because we're working on those with like financial foundations and conflict resolutions and those wraparounds that we feel tremendously blessed. I love coming to the M Street Shelter. Lori will tell you, I'm here a lot. There's a lot of love going on in this place. <laughs> a lot of championing, a lot of encouragement, a lot of great hugs, and a lot of great people here. Not only like Lori and Mari and all the folks that serve here every on a daily basis, but the folks that live here, there's some amazing people, and I believe God's doing some amazing things in their, in their lives through the work that's going on collaboratively in our community. And we feel honored as CityServe to be a part of that 
personally, it's a tremendous blessing for me. So thank you, uh, Sheila, Lori, Ryan, Amanda, Jim, everybody that's serving here. Um, we love you guys, and we're blessed to be a part of what's happening at Industry. God bless you guys. of living in my car and struggling through a multitude of situations on and off since 2013. That was also not the beginning I, I imagined. Um, that was stagnating the first few months, afraid of to come and go because uh, living in a world of, filled up with COVID-19 for the first time, it was terrifying. Um, the idea that I could catch it and pass it on to my friends and my family, it was terrifying. So the idea um, kept me in, in kind of a paralysis, but also created a sense of complacency. I became comfortable, made acquaintances, found uh, routines, but also I did not move forward. This was out of character for me. I have always persevere, succeed wherever I find myself, uh, having been educated and degree. My time as a senior field representative, a senior organizer, um, took me all over the West Coast and the East Coast. Um, I was not utilizing for the first time all the tools that moved me successfully through life. Um, the experience of one life changing event had altered me I had my career stolen by a recession that I didn't realize at the time it was a recession. Um, I spent years living off my severance pay uh, and my cash out, my 401k. Uh, the job market never stabilizes for me. My pride deterred me and then, and it was still deterring me at the present. I have never known how to ask for help. Even though I was here at the shelter, I was still not knowing how to ask for help. The COVID slowed down the process and just allow, also just allow by slow my, my journey. And I always hoped that there were chances to volunteer in the kitchen. The staff in, in the and the environment seemed to be welcoming. I always felt at home at kitchens. An opportunity arose 
where the whole person care was holding a class for a self-serve food handling program. It will give me the ability to give back to the place that has sheltered me and be able to add a new skill on my resume. Um, getting certificates spark a feeling that I haven't had for a while, the feeling for, of, of purpose. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Lori Howey and John Flores um, for supporting me to push, uh, to push myself, but most of all for believing in me. The certificate allowed me to be hands-on again. The kitchen staff trusted me enough to guide me through the operations until I was able to perform all the, all the duties. The training is taking um, out to the dorm's operations. Um, one opportunity led to another, and I was able to enroll in a culinary cohort, a collaboration between CityServe and Bakersfield College. And you know what they say, once a renegade, always a renegade. <laughs> I was finally leaving. I was ready to move forward, make friendships again. Um, I was ready to take small opportunities and make a life out of them. In close, my volunteering in the kitchen and MC navigation center gave me a way to serve my fellow residents while getting to know the incredible staff that works in here. They're a cohesive group that regardless of what they have going on in their lives, um, they rally together and make this place work. In the future, I can see me back on my feet, starting from getting my own place, um, and why not? Coming back and working for a community action partnership of Kern. Thank you.
cover our shelter workers who are actually not here as well, but they come on a little bit later. Kahaya Brewster and Jeremy Guidry. And then I'd like to really recognize um, my staff that work directly with me. They help put this all together. Ms. Amy Brown is our program coordinator. She coordinates all of our services with our partners. She makes sure our partners are happy. And then Ms. Marinella Rios. She is our volunteer coordinator. And she works with all of our volunteers. She accepts all of our donations. She makes sure that we have what it is, what's needed to provide for you guys to keep going. And so now we have our last um, speaker, and this is Mr. Johnny Ware, and he has a story to tell, and I, I'm just going to let him tell it. <laughs> Good morning. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today. It's such a wonderful day to be here. Uh, you know, Mike, can we take a moment to bow our head and give God thanks? The Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to get up. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for watching over us, feeding us, taking care of us, and blessing us with the navigation center and all the people who work around it. Lord, we know that above all, Jesus is the reason for the season. Without him, we wouldn't be here. So we give you all the praise, thanksgiving, and the honor in Jesus' name. Before I get started on me, uh, I was surprised. I'm still uh, taken aback. Miss Lori asked me to speak, and I don't, I'm don't. i not good at speaking. I don't know what to say, you know. So I didn't write very many notes now. And I'm going to get very short. It's not sweet, but short. But I just thank <laughs> you so much for being here. I just feel so privileged. If you knew my background and knew where I came from, you'd just say, wow, man, what are you doing here? You know? It's just... Uh, <clears throat> It's amazing how things can turn around. Uh, I've been called, you know, this and that. You know, he think he's this, he think he's that. And you just don't know me. You know me a few months ago. I was sleeping over at the Wells Fargo Bank. I used to be a client over there. When I went over there, I was sleeping over there. My account was still leaving. So if you knew I was sleeping on the ground, <laughs> not too far from the phone machine, you'd say, wow, what happened to this guy, you know? So I have to give credit to uh, the uh, navigation center turned my life around. I was on drugs and alcohol. I came here, bad teeth, bad breath, bad past, bad record, been to prison, bad credit. Everything about me was bad. So if you knew my record, you would, you'd say, wow, you'd be uh, patting me on the shoulder saying, man, how did you do that? Well, I couldn't do it alone. So I did borrow a line from uh, Viviana. When I'm here from the navigation to her, Miss Glory, and John, and Keith, my uh, navigator, I would be able to do this. I came over here, man, I was so busted and I was, you know, from a stupor the night before. And I just went to the blood. I went to the blood to just put my name in the hat. I didn't plan on getting any help. I wanted to stay on drugs and alcohol and do what I wanted to do. So, uh, blood put me in the van and brought me over here. And the uh, first thing Keith did, uh, he went out to the gate and met me. He says, my name is Keith. I'm going to be your navigator. And I'm thinking, oh, really? Oh, this little short dude, what did you do? <laughs>